Hello, Pure Heart family. So glad you could join us for church today. If you're part of our online experience on Facebook, you can click a like, share this video with a friend, or share it to your own Facebook page. You can also start a watch party of the service and invite your friends. Big shout out to everyone attending the watch party at the Peoria campus. And if you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. For those of you watching in the United States, I wanna wish you a very happy 4th of July weekend. You know, in the midst of the upheaval of our nation and with all the uncertainty with face, I heard recently a quote by our second president. He said, you'll never know how much it cost the present generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you make good use of it. So with that in mind, let's each of us thank God for his blessings in our nation and prayerfully ask him for the opportunities to use our religious freedoms to continue to be his light in these dark times. And so here we go. We're gonna take this time together to refocus and encourage our hearts. And we're gonna cast out fear and lies from our mind. And we're gonna lean in. We're gonna grab our Bibles, open our Bible apps, and let's worship together, grow together. We're gonna become more like Jesus for the sake of others. Welcome to church. Wherever you're at, would you stand up and would you worship God with us? We're so excited to worship with you. Through this crazy time, we know there's been a lot of ups and downs, but we know that God is worthy no matter what. He has a plan no matter what, and he is in this with us. Amen? So let's stand up and let's worship together.
up your presence. Your presence is an open door. We want you, Lord, like never before. Your presence is an open door. in this place Father. no matter where we're at Father God your presence is always there Father I thank you in the midst of this struggle and the trials that we're walking through Father God we know that you make a way that your presence that your spirit makes a way Father and it's with us at all times thank you Lord sending heat not knowing how we'll get through this test but holding on to faith you know best And nothing can catch you by surprise You've got this figured out And you're watching us now Ooh, But when it looks as if we can win it ooh, You wrap us in your arms and you step in and everything we need you supply you got this in control now we know that you put made a way when our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you oh god you made a way and we're standing here only because you made a way You made a way Now we're here Oh, looking back on where I've come from Oh, because of you and nothing I've done you deserve the love and mercy you've shown. Your grace was strong enough to pick us up and heal. But you made the way. Yes, you did. When our backs were against the wall and it looked as if it was over you, you came in and made a way. Oh, and we're standing.
Father, but you made a way. You, oh, you made a way. Oh, yeah. to make a way, made a way. Thank you, Lord. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. Sorrow may come in the dark kiss tonight, but the cross has the final word. Come on, let's sing that again. The cross has the final word. The cross has the final word. This evil may put up its strongest fight. But the cross has the final word. Look. Hey! The cross has the final word. Ah. The cross has the final word. Yeah, the Savior has come in the morning light. The cross
make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face towards you and give you peace. Come in, come in, come in.
just give you praise wherever we're at. And we can say that we can say yes and amen. God, that you are for us and you are with us. God, in this season, we need you. We need you so desperately, God. There's so many things that are changing in our world, and it feels like it changes every time you turn around. But God, just knowing that you are outside of time, you see the end from the beginning. You know what's coming. You have a plan. God, for all those that would believe in you, that would trust you, that would seek you, God, you will give them the peace that surpasses all understanding. You will give them wisdom for what they're supposed to do with their family. God, what is the church supposed to do in this time? What are all these things supposed to look like? God, we know that you have a plan and we trust you. And we give you all the praise wherever we're at, all around the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, as we come together to worship, one of the ways we worship is we pray for other churches because we are the body of Christ as one church all around the world. And so today we're praying for Pastor John, John Heston at Valley View Bible Church. And Pastor Dan has mentored Pastor John. He's had the privilege to mentor him. And it's just an incredible church. And so we're going to pray for them today. They are part of our Better Together churches. And they also help serve in School Connect. And so, Father God, we just lift up Valley View Bible Church and Pastor John Heston to you. We pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would give them wisdom in this time. God, that you would bless the leadership at that church, that you would bless the congregation. God, that they would worship you today wherever they're at, God. They would enter into your presence and hear the word, and that you continue to do mighty things through that church. We thank you for Valley View Bible Church and for Pastor John. And we just give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pure Heart family, so glad you could join us today online. Uh, just some important things regarding services on physical campuses I wanted to share with you. So this week, many of you have heard about the new Arizona executive order regarding large groups of people congregating. So to honor the requests of our governing authorities, we are temporarily pausing weekend services on our Glendale campus for the month of July. At our Peoria campus, we'll be doing watch parties of the online experience and at the normal 10 a.m. service times there. Other life groups and support groups will carry on as scheduled. Also, Peoria family, we need prayer in our lives, especially right now, and we need each other. So on Wednesday nights on Pure Heart's Facebook page, we have both. First, we have our live stream prayer event led by Pastor Paul and the Pure Heart staff who co-host with him. And if you have prayer requests, you can submit them on the chat so they can join up with you in lifting those needs. And directly after, we're actually re-premiering some of Pastor Dan's sermons that he shared at the beginning of COVID-19. So some of these topics are really applicable as we continue on this pandemic journey in a world of uncertainty that we are facing. You can open the Pure Heart app, go to the Sermons tab to watch past messages. Also in the app, you can do many other things like listen to Pure Heart podcasts or easily do your giving of tithes and offerings there. And Pure Heart family, we know that God is going to continue to grow us into becoming more like Christ as we remember that the church is not a building. Pure Heart family, I love you so much. What an honor to be one of the pastors at this great church. This weekend, you are in for a treat. Pastor John Jennings is bringing the message. I've known Pastor John now for almost a decade. Our kids went to school together. We've served locally in the local schools, helping out and making a difference together. I love his heart for Jesus. I love his passion to see us as Jesus followers grow deeper and deeper in our faith. I asked him about two years ago, I said, John, what's your greatest passion in ministry? He said, discipleship, helping people grow. So when we had the opportunity to bring him on our team almost 18 months ago now, it was one of the greatest joys of my life. John is making a huge difference in leading the Pure Heart family. You are gonna enjoy this message today. God bless you, family. We'll see you soon. Well, we wanna welcome all of you that have joined us for this service especially Crossroads Recovery. We love you guys, and we're honored that you joined us today. Well, we are back online for our services for the month of July, and as much as we would love to have in-person gatherings, we are truly thankful for the capabilities that we have to be able to share the hope of Jesus with you online. We're so honored to be with you today. This past week, has brought many more changes for us 
here in our state as the number of COVID cases has increased and continues to climb. There are some businesses that have had to cease operations again. There's new restrictions on gathering sizes. The start of school for on-campus instruction has been pushed back to a later date. And we know that this is not just happening in Arizona. It's happening in, in many other parts of the country as well. And what this has done, it's brought about a fresh wave of frustration for so many of us who felt as though that things were starting to somewhat get back to normal. One of the most frustrating things that, that I have sensed as I've talked to people and I've watched some of the social media feeds and the posts that, that have been put out there is that people just really don't know what to believe right now. There's, there's this sense of mistrust that's happening. And we find ourselves living in an age of misinformation where uh, the headlines rule the day, but the headlines seldom, if ever, tell the whole story. Well, it's interesting because as I read through Scripture, we find that the Apostle Paul, writing more than 2,000 years ago, said that this very thing would happen even when it comes to Scripture in the way of Jesus. Check this out. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 and 4, Paul said, For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So we see that in the natural realm, but even sometimes when it comes to Scripture and the, and the ways of Jesus and the things of God, some people are turned aside and they believe myths. Now there's a phrase that, that I hear quite often, and I hear it quoted, especially in difficult times. Preachers have said it. Teachers have said it. Well-meaning friends have said it, and we tend to buy into this phrase because once we look at it, we're going to realize, man, this thing sounds really, really good, and we desperately want to believe that it's true. And here it is. The phrase is this, God will never put more on us than we can bear. I mean, that sounds great, um, but we have to ask ourselves, is this true? Is it even biblical? Or is it, in the words of Paul that we just read, is this a myth? I think sometimes the reason that we buy into this, this well-intentioned phrase that God will never put on us more than we can bear is that sometimes unintentionally we believe that God exists to serve us. What do I mean by that? Well, we're going through a difficult stretch. We're going through a difficult period of time and, and we're carrying this load and we're carrying this burden and, and we think to ourselves, you know, you know God, this, this burden here is getting pretty heavy and you said that you would never give me more than I can bear. And then we think, okay, that's the point where God should, should step in and, and say, oh, you know what, you're right, sorry, you know, my bad. I was busy on the other side. I, I was taking care of some business in, in Tibet or in some remote part of the world. And l let me get back to you now because, yeah, after all, I, I did say that. We unintentionally believe that God exists to serve us. And when we're carrying this load, that he should just step in immediately and lift it from us. Now, this phrase also arises uh, not only when we're under heavy stress and under a load and, and we feel like God exists to serve us, but it also arises when well-meaning people speak into our lives when, when they don't know what else to say. I mean, let's face it, you're going through something, you're going through a difficult time, and then that well-meaning person comes, comes into your life and says, oh, you, you just need to hang in there. Remember, the Bible says that God will never give us more than we can bear. Now, where did this idea even come from? It's actually a misquotation of 1 Corinthians 10, 13. That's where this comes from. Let's look at this. No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out 
so that you can endure it. So this is where the misquote comes from. And what God is saying to us through this verse here, he's saying, look, there's never going to be a temptation that you face, a temptation to sin that you're not going to have a way out of. It's a wonderful promise to us that we will be able to bear up under the load of temptation. What it doesn't tell us It never says that we won't face pressure-packed situations that will seem to create an overbearing load on our life. So the question is, what do we do when we find ourselves under an unbearable load? It's a great question, especially in the day that we live in. Well, fortunately for us, Paul also addresses this very issue about situations that arise that become almost overbearing situations. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, starting in verse 8, he said, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles we experienced in Asia. Now check this out. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure so that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril, and he will deliver us again. On him we have set our hope that he will continue to deliver us. Paul is saying, look, we were under this great pressure. We didn't know how we were going to endure it. But we know that God had proven himself faithful in the past. And we're leaning on the faithfulness of God to understand that if he has the capability to raise the dead, he has the capability to get me through this pressure-packed situation that I'm facing. And that's exactly what God does. God allows us at times in our life to go through seemingly unbearable seasons. He will allow us to go through the valley of the shadow of death because he wants to show us his life and his resurrection power. He will allow us at times to to be overwhelmed, to remind us that the God that we serve is never overwhelmed by our situation. He will allow us to feel the pressure to let us know that he will never, ever allow us to be crushed by our situation. You see, what God does do, it never says God will not give us more than we can bear. But what we see in this passage is that God will sometimes allow us to have more than we can bear. Don't miss this. He'll allow us to have more than we can bear on our own strength so that we don't boast in our own strength and we become desperate for his strength. So don't buy into this myth that God doesn't give us more than we can bear because then that would give us the ability to blame God for our situation rather than understanding that he allows us to pass through difficult seasons in order to demonstrate his strength to us. So here's your big takeaway for this weekend. Check this out. When the load is unbearable, let him bear the load. When the load is unbearable, let him bear the load. Since we're on Paul's writings, we're talking about a man here who had been shipwrecked, a man who had been beaten, who had been stoned, who had been whipped many, many times in his life as a result of his efforts to spread the gospel. And he writes this in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. He said, we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God, not from us. We're hard-pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. Perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. And then he goes on, and I love this part. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. 
for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us. See, there's something at work here, Paul says. When we're going through this stuff, we're going through these these pressure-packed seasons that for our light and momentary affliction, they are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes. we, We keep our focus not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So what I want to do in the time that we have left together is I want to take you and I want to show you a real life example, something that actually happened in the Old Testament. Somebody just like you and I that went through a pressure-packed situation, something, as we're going to see, something that came out of nowhere, And we're going to see how they were able to bear up under the pressure and how they were able to let God bear the load when the load became unbearable. It's found in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. And the story revolves around a great king in the history of Judah. His name was Jehoshaphat. And Jehoshaphat was facing a very real problem just like many of us are carrying in this season that we find ourselves in right now. He's carrying a burden. He's carrying a great load. And and here's how it happened. Jehoshaphat is is a great king. He's one of the great kings that that Judah had. Things are peaceful in the land. There's no no strife. There's no conflict. It's just a season where it seems like God's, God's favor is reigning. And then all of a sudden, and without warning, this happens. We start in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. It says, After this, the Moabites and the Ammonites, with some of the Meunites, came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Now again, This absolutely came out of nowhere. These nations from from the other side of the Dead Sea start mobilizing against him. Now, let me me pause just for a second here, and let's just be real about this. Problems that we face in life are never planned. They are never planned planned. It's, it's not like we, we take out our, our iPads or our phones and we say, okay, you know what? Next, next Thursday at one o'clock, I've got a clear schedule. So that would be a fantastic time for, for um, a, a problem to come. Because I think I can handle it right then because there's nothing else around it. That's not how it works. That's not how life works at all. We don't schedule problems. They usually hit out of nowhere. And that is exactly what has happened in this last season. When we were planning for 2020, I I promise you, I've not met one person, not one person that said, you know what? I'm planning that in just a couple of months into 2020, we are going to have three major things converge. We're going to have a pandemic. We're going to have racial tensions and protests that happen. And we're going to have economic uncertainty. We're going to have all three of these things converge at the same time. I've not talked to one person who believed that those three things could happen or the ripple effects that have taken a place as a result of those things. So Jehoshaphat is just, he's just chilling in his home in Jerusalem. And then all of a sudden he gets word that these nations are mobilizing against him. Verse two, some people came and told Jehoshaphat, a vast army is coming against you from Edom, from the other side of the Dead Sea. It is already in Hazazon Tamar, that is in Gedi. So Jehoshaphat, look, the army is in our backyard. In Gedi is like 55 miles or so from Jerusalem, which means, okay, they're, they're close, but they're probably still a few days away from reaching our city. But regardless of this, alarmed, the next verse says, alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord And he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. Now, alarmed here means to be filled with fear. He wasn't immune to the fear that comes from sudden problems. But this is what I love about this. Jehoshaphat would not allow fear to cloud his judgment. He resolved to inquire of the Lord, to fix his eyes on 
the things that he knew were going to be eternal because he understood even many, many centuries before the Apostle Paul would pen those words that we looked at earlier, Jehoshaphat understood that, okay, this is temporary and temporal. It's real. We don't downplay it. But I'm going to inquire of the Lord and I'm going to realize something and I'm going to execute something in my life that when the load becomes unbearable, I'm going to let God bear the load. So Jehoshaphat calls a fast, which to me is kind of funny because they didn't have a lot of time. I mean, this is going to be a fast fast. They didn't have time for a 40 day. They didn't have time for a, for a 10 day. They had maybe three, four days at tops to try to figure out what exactly it was that God wanted them to do in this situation. But don't miss this point. Sometimes when we are fearful, in these pressure-packed moments, it clouds our judgment. Don't let that happen. Tune into the Spirit of God. Lean into what God can do in this situation. And when the load gets to be too much to bear, let God bear the load. So some people came, they said, look, this is where the army is. He proclaims a fast. And then in verse four, the people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. So the word spreads fast. They come from every city. Makes sense. Ancient armies moved at a very methodical pace, but the people came together to inquire to the Lord and to seek the Lord about the problem. Now, we're not going to read this, but in verse 5 of this passage, the king starts to pray, and it's an amazing prayer. I would encourage you on your own time to read that section out. But I want to pick it up in verse 12, because Jehoshaphat says something here in his prayer that I think is so relevant for the time that we live in. Our God, will you not judge them? Will you not? God, I'm rolling this onto you. Will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. This is it right here. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. God, we have no power to face this problem. This army is, is too big. It's happening too fast. And I can't bear it. We have no idea what to do. You know, as I was thinking and as I was working through this, this passage and preparing this word to bring to you, that I know exactly how Jehoshaphat feels. I was talking to some of our team the other day, and I was really trying to flesh out what I was processing and what God was saying. And I realized something that I had gotten to a point now that I've been in ministry for full-time service of God, pastoral work for 28 years. I really believed that by the time I got to this point in my life, in this season of my life, I, I, with, with all the experience and everything, I would be totally 100% equipped to handle anything. I mean, I, I'm ready. I, I've got my bag of stones, so to speak, and I, I'm ready to go out into the valley and face any giant. It's, it's like, bring it on. Br- bring it on, devil, because I'm ready to face anything that you have head on. And then the constant shifting, you know, our COVID cases up, COVID cases down, economic uncertainty, racial tension, church being turned on its ear, not being able to gather as a congregation, not being able to gather like we want to, and not being able to hear the sound of worship like I'm used to. It did something inside of my heart. And I realized that God in this season, that we are in as a pastor, as a leader, I find myself in this spot. I don't know what to do. And some of you are in exactly that same position. You're facing many things, and what you're facing may not even be COVID-related. It may have absolutely nothing to do with any of these three things converging right now, but whatever it is that you are facing, you may find yourself in a spot 
where you look at the situation, you say, God, I have absolutely no idea what to, you, what to do. If that's you, can I just encourage you today? That doesn't make you any less of a person. It doesn't make you any less of a Jesus follower. It doesn't make you less spiritual than the next person if you have no idea what to do. Because here's what I do know, that when the load is unbearable, we have to let him bear the load. We can't be afraid to go to God and say, God, help, I can't handle this on my own. I need your power. It's not a lack of faith, ladies and gentlemen, to do that. We don't know what to do. We're clueless, we're powerless. The king was desperate. And, and, and most of the time, most of the time, that kind of desperation is good. You know why? Because when problems hit, we usually have one of three responses and God wants us to respond differently. But our three responses usually come in number one, the form of anger, where I'm mad at God for allowing this to happen. I, and, and I think the reason that we get angry is because those are the moments when we realize how not in control of our lives that we really are. So we get angry. We also get confused. Like, God, I don't, I don't get it. I, maybe you're in a situation where you're thinking to yourself, God, I've done everything right. I, I'm in this situation. I've done nothing wrong. I, 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 I've, I've, I've been faithful to you. I've, I've done this. I've done A, B, C, and D. I've read the word. I've prayed. I've, I've tithed. I've, I, I've gathered together with the other saints. I've served in the church. God, I, I don't understand this. I, I'm bewildered. We get confused. Or the other response that we have, and I hope that we're not there, is that we fall into despair. Despair is getting to the point where you hate life and you just want out. You, you're looking for an exit and you're literally wanting a way out of life that you're in. Somewhere along the line, if you've fallen into despair, you bought into a lie that God has given up on you, that he's forsaken you, that he has abandoned you. This type of thing can happen. Falling into despair can happen when you go for a routine physical and cancer pops up. Falling into despair can happen when you've tried for years to get pregnant and then you finally do and you lose the baby. Or when you unexpectedly lose a loved one. Or when you pour all of your energies into a marriage, into a relationship, and your spouse then all of a sudden, when you've done all you can do, your spouse decides to walk out. That's when you can fall into despair. But remember what Paul said earlier? He said, we're perplexed, but we're not in despair. See, to be perplexed is not just to be confused. In the original language, to be perplexed means to be without resources. It means I, ha I have nothing to, that I can do to make this come to pass in the way that I want it to. God, I don't know what to do, but here's what I won't do. I will not let my perplexity fall into despair. I'm not at the point of renouncing all hope. But yet I know that despair can happen. Anger and confusion can happen. But again, there's a better solution. When the load is unbearable, let him bear the load. But the reality, ladies and gentlemen, is this. This idea of letting God bear the load, it's not passive. It's not a situation where you completely remove yourself there's things that we can do as we lean in to God, as we're able to roll these, these, these burdens, as we're able to take this, this load that we're carrying and we're able to put it onto his shoulders and allow him to carry it. There's some things that we can do to help ourselves work through the process. And Jehoshaphat had a solution, two things. The first thing for his solution was to lean into the word of God. 2 Chronicles 20, verse 13, all the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. I, I wasn't going to go here because it doesn't really 
fit with the main point of where we're going, but I think it's important to realize in this passage right here that it was the men of Judah with their wives and their children. The entire family was involved in this, in carrying this weight and realizing what we need to do as a family to put ourselves out there in a spot where we can give God this burden that that we're carrying right now. I love that passage there. All the men of Judah with their wives and children and little ones stood there before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel, a descendant of Asaph, as he stood in the assembly. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. I love this. For the battle is not yours but God's. God is speaking into the fear and the pain of the moment. He's not denying it. He's speaking into the fear and pain of the moment. He's speaking through the circumstance. He's speaking through the situation. Why? Because when the load is unbearable, we have to let God bear the load. So here's what I'd like for you to do. I'd like for you to take the situation that you find yourself in at this moment in your life, regardless of what it is, and I want you to fill in this blank. The blank is not yours, but it's God. It's God's. And that's a hard thing to do sometimes. COVID is not yours, it's God's. The bad marriage, the sickness, the job loss, the unpaid bills, the wayward child, the battle is not mine, but it is the Lord's. Lean in to his word. God says, look, it's not yours, it's mine. Tomorrow, he continues, march down against them. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions, stand firm, and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Go out, face this head on, knowing that when the load becomes too heavy, we can give that load over to God. We're going to face this head on because we know it's not in our own strength. It's not in our own might or our power or our own resources. I may be angry. I may be confused. I may be in despair about this situation, but I am not going to fight this on my own strength. I am going to let God fight this battle for me. Nothing is going to stand in the way of me allowing God to take what I am willing to give into his hands. God helps us bear the load, but it starts with us actively leaning in and hearing what he's saying in this moment. So onward they march. But it wasn't just the word of God that helped them roll this over and letting God bear the load. It was also the worship of God that came into play. Jehoshaphat, verse 18, bowed down with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and the Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Let me just pause there for a second. Right now, whatever you face may seem completely overwhelming. But in light of God's eternal purpose for your life, don't let the situation that you are facing steal the joy of the Lord in your life. Worship God in spite of your circumstances. It's exactly what the people did. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the army saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. King does an interesting thing here. He says, you know what we're going to do? This is how we're going to let God fight this battle. We're going to put the singers out in front of the army. 
the Warriors must have been thinking, are you kidding me? Singers are not exactly, I'm a singer, we're not exactly known to be the most ferocious people, right? But yet Jehoshaphat says, we're putting the singers out in front of the army. And probably some people are thinking the king is marching us right to our death. And then what they did was so fascinating. They sang a Chris Tomlin song 2,500 years before Chris Tomlin ever wrote the song. Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. Forever God is faithful. Now, if I'm being honest with you guys, that probably would not have been my choice in that circumstance. I'm thinking something like um, a fire goes before God and burns up all his enemies. The hills melt like wax. You know, that, that, kind, of, that kind of song right out of Psalms, you know. But they gave thanks to God, and I love this, for his faithful love that endures forever. They recognize, God, in spite of what I'm facing right now, you haven't changed. Your nature hasn't changed. Your character hasn't changed. Your enduring love is working in my life at this very moment. And I am going to sing unto you even when everything around me is going bad. Can I just say to you that anybody can praise God when things are going good, but it takes a true worshiper to lift up their voice under any circumstance when they're allowing God to bear their load. And and when When you do lift up your praise to God, that breakthrough that you're waiting for in your life may just be locked up in the praise that you're about to give to God. There is something about praise under pressure that God responds to. And that's the type of praise that went forth from God's people. This praise under pressure set the enemy to flight. The story goes on. And it tells about how the armies actually turned inward and started destroying each other. See, that's what praise does. It brings confusion into the camp of the enemy and scatters his armies. So it was the word of God and it was the worship of God that happened as Jehoshaphat came up with this solution to this very real problem and this heavy load that they were facing. But here's what I don't want you to miss as I conclude this word today. There was a decision that had to be made. A decision that had to be made that we are going to do this, that we are going to let him bear the load when our load is unbearable. The reality is, ladies and gentlemen, it is completely up to us. We can take the attitude, you know what, God, you put this load on me and it's more than I can bear right now. But that's not what happened. Jehoshaphat didn't know what to do except roll this unto God. He leaned into him. He leaned into God's word and what God was saying in the middle of that. He leaned into worship by placing God in the highest place where he belongs over all powers and principalities, over every circumstance and every situation because that's what worship enables us to do. It enables us to do something that we cannot do in our own strength. It enables us to do what Psalm 55, 22 exhorts us to do. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. That Hebrew word for cast means to hurl or to throw. It's not just to toss it gently at God. It's to say, you know what? This thing is too heavy for me to bear. I am casting this load on you because when my load becomes unbearable, I'm going to let you, God, bear the load. So I want to pray for you as we conclude this time in the word together today. And I I want to pray for you in two specific ways. First of all, I want to pray for those of you that are looking at this situation that our world is in right now where these three things have converged together and you're looking at this as a completely hopeless situation and you're looking at it from the standpoint that I don't know if God is in this or not. I don't know if God is in this circumstance. I don't know if he's in this situation that I'm in because you're facing the realities and the ripple effects of what is happening in our world. And maybe you're angry, maybe you're confused, maybe you're in despair. I'm gonna pray for you this morning. 
I'm also going to pray for those of you that are watching this and you're thinking, you know what? This is my moment. I, I'm looking for some way to release this load and I'm ready to cast this burden that I'm carrying on God. I'm ready to give God complete control of my life. I'm ready to ask him to be my Lord, to be my Savior, to be the leader of my life. And that's where I want to start. If that's you and you're watching this online, there's a button that's going to come up on your screen. It's going to say, today I put my trust in Jesus. And I would love for you, if you're committing your life to Jesus for the first time, or maybe you're recommitting your life to Christ, love for you to click that button because we're going to pray and we want you to pray this in your heart. So I'm going to start there and then I'm going to pray for those of you that today are carrying these burdens and you're ready to roll this onto the Lord because when the load is unbearable, we let him bear the load. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this moment that we've been able to share. This very real story of real people just like us who faced an unforeseen situation. And in those moments, they were able to lean into you. And today, God, I pray specifically for those that are saying yes to you. We ask you today to come and meet them where they're at. We ask you, Lord, to touch their hearts in a real and tangible way. And those of you that are praying this prayer, just say in your heart, say, God, I invite you to come into my life, to be the Lord of my life, to lead my life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and save me from this life so that I can live your life. Thank you for that today. And God, for those that are just carrying immense loads right now, give us the grace and the capacity to turn those over to you and to let you bear the load, to fight the battle. I pray against anger, confusion, and despair, that you would roll those things off and that you would allow your presence to come to the forefront, knowing that the battle is not ours, but it's yours. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. As you've heard over the last couple of months and through our service today, God's doing amazing things in us and through us for the sake of others. And we're so blessed that with your cheerful and generous giving, we get to be a part of the plans that God has for this world. We consistently ask the question, if Pure Heart was gone tomorrow, would our community miss us? And the youth program we gathered over the last three weeks, we saw that was exactly the case. In the midst of the chaos of our current world, last week on our Glendale campus, we had more high schoolers attend youth service than in the previous year. Also, over the last three weeks, we had 20 new youth come and check out church in person. And the youth program, online church service attendance, has stayed unbelievably strong with over 1,500 online views. This shows that the church now more than ever is an essential resource. The teenagers right now are facing confusion and loss at great levels. This time has been hard on all of us. But think back to the challenges of your youth. Then add the added pressures of navigating the world we're living in. Not only the pressures of social media, but now the loss of their sports programs, quarantine from their friends, school being done online, canceled graduations, and stressed out parents at home. These youth right now are seeking out stability and open in new ways to hear about a God who can bring peace through his faithfulness in the midst of this life storm. So as you put your tithes and offerings in the mail, as you're giving online, text to give or in the Pure Heart app, know that this is what your generosity is going to support. Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now for how you're reaching and touching all these youth, God. We ask you that more and more youth would begin to find connection, find relationship with you, Heavenly Father. Empower their parents, empower leaders around them to pour into their lives, God. Let them come to know a deeper relationship with you in the stress and turmoil that they are currently facing. In Jesus' name. Thank you, family, for your continued support of Pure Heart as God is expanding our reach across the nation and the world to reach hurting and lost people. Also, if you're looking for any of the links that we mentioned during the service, you're joining us for the first time, thank you so much for joining us. You need prayer or you want to help with our COVID-19 response teams. You're going to find all those ways to get connected at that link, pureheart.org slash weekendconnect. So be encouraged and have an amazing week. Keep your focus on Him as we continue to love like Christ for the sake of others in new and exciting ways. See you next week.